Hello Internet, it's Daniel with Driving and Dragons. Today I'm here to talk a little bit about experience points and ways to award them, ways to make adjustments to how they're distributed and how you can use them to influence your game. This may be a little bit rambly, it's definitely freeform. We're going to start off right on the bat that I, in games where experience points are really a thing, I tend to favor milestone advancement, particularly if it's got those hard level lines. So, for instance, in Dungeons & Dragons, you have classes. Those classes have very clearly defined benefits from level 1 to level 2 to level 3, so on and so forth. At level 3, you can use this sword. At level 2, you cannot. At level 5, you have the cleave mega hit the next guy after you kill this dude special ability. At level 4, you do not. The milestone system becomes makes it a very easy way for you to balance that as a game master. Now, experience points are more open to manipulation than milestone leveling, which is one of the problems that I have with them. Because even when you use good game master behavior to kind of curtail those kind of manipulations, you still have situations where players find ways to do the proverbial video game, I'm going to go kill the level 5 monster over and over and over and over and over again until I hit whatever level I need to be to be overpowered for the next event. And yes, there's ways to curtail that, there's ways to put limits on it, there's ways to penalize it to a certain extent, but it doesn't mean that it's not exploitable. In games where advancement is a little bit more nebulous, I'm far more lenient towards XP leveling. I'm far more open and amiable to it. Now, for instance, I use the straight-up, out-of-the-book leveling system for Cyberpunk Red. When you're talking about skill-based advancement games where it's all about putting in skill points and leveling up things on a minor, minute scale, you don't have that balance-breaking change in abilities that you can get through a more level-based system. Getting into the meat and potatoes of this, let's talk about XP. If you're going to use XP, I am a big fan of using that as both a carrot and a stick for the players. And what I mean by that is if you want to reward good player behavior with more XP, and if you want to curtail XP for what would be considered poor player behavior, that is not a bad thing in my opinion. I think that's actually a, a wise way to use XP. For example, if you have the paladin who is making the heroic sacrifice, the great last stand, and he survives that, he should get additional experience above and beyond what the group gets. Maybe a small, like here's a 500 or a 1,000 experience bonus because you are doing something that doesn't have a definitive bon uh, benefit to it just being in character. You do a particular role-playing thing. You give up a... Uh, high value item that you found because you're supposed to when you could benefit from keeping it, but you do what you're supposed to do. So therefore, we give you, you know, you get some kind of benefit for that. On the flip side, if you've got the paladin who's finding excuses to run away and you're, for whatever reason, not using alignment to curtail this behavior, or, you know, you got the fighter who's always running away or who is trying to stay in the back and only participate in situations where they have the best advantage. Or you have players who are intentionally finding some way to cheese their way around things. Maybe those players don't get as much experience. I tend to do things by group. I think that's the best way to do it is by group. Because then you don't have an imbalance where the player who's doing all the hacking and slashing is saying that they should get more experience. The level of success that the group has in a particular mission, awards a certain amount of XP to everybody. This is straight up from Cyberpunk. This the way it works is like if the mission is a great success, you get this much improvement points. If the mission is not so great a success, but you still got through it, you get this many points. If the mission was an abject failure, but you still managed to you know get through one way or another, you get this many points. That's a perfectly good way to run any EXP system. You judge the entire group and you have a baseline 
of how well the group did. Then you turn around and you have individual, and a lot of times individual in the moment XP awards. So for instance, the rogue comes up with a super clever way around a group of traps or a puzzle that's in a dungeon. So you say, hey, pencil it in on your sheet. That's smart. You're going to get an extra 500 experience point from this mission. You're going to get an extra 50 XP, you know, whatever's level appropriate or whatever's appropriate to your table. The cleric who steps up clutch, maybe, hey, you're going to get an extra 150 XP for stepping up clutch in a big way or for finding a way to utilize your religion to resolve this otherwise difficult social event. That is a way to reward good player behavior. And I see it from kind of a military aspect. Instead of punishing the individual, you punish the entire group, but you don't punish them directly. So if the rogue is constantly misbehaving, stealing from other party members, making a jackass of themselves, they are hurting the party as a whole. If the paladin or the fighter or whoever is constantly hiding from combat, trying to protect their character as opposed to work for the good of the group, you start to see the the level of success that the group has comes back down. They're leveling up slower. They're getting fewer experience points. But at the same time, because the rogue is really putting in his work and doing stuff, he's getting some XP bonuses that assist. You know, the wizard did some things that came in clutch at the right time, came up with the great idea, whatever the case may be, whether it's an in-game or out-of-game thing, those XP bonuses then make up for the overall failure of the group. And, you know, when you get that inevitable, uh, why has John got so much extra experience points? You know, he's now two levels ahead of me. And it's like, well, John is an incredibly um, active rogue. He doesn't have his... He's not on his cell phone at the game table all the time, so he actually is looking for solutions in-game and comes up with really clever ways that just advance the party as a whole and help save the mission. And you were busy stealing everybody's stuff, which made the final boss fight more difficult, which means he got away instead of being captured, or you killed the spy instead of capturing him, so now we no longer can get the, uh, get the information and that damaged the whole party's success, so it cost everybody experience points. So it gives you a barometer that can reward players for good play and punish players for bad play without calling them out at the table and saying, hey, minus 500 experience points. It wasn't minus 500 experience points. It was minus 1,000 experience points to the entire party, which ended up being minus 150 to everybody. But that's okay because the paladin made a big heroic stand that made up for your screw up and got himself an extra 200 experience. So he comes out ahead or the same as he was before, basically unhurt. Meanwhile, you have less experience points because you set up the situation that he had to be approved in. Another issue that I tend to have with like experience points based systems is a lot of games have situations where XP gets spent on abilities. The most famous example I can think of is XP penalties or XP costs for casting certain spells and whatnot in uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I understand them. I understand them as a balance. I don't like them. I think because the, the, it leads to a situation what I call elixir syndrome. In uh, the old Final Fantasy games, you would get the elixir item, or not the elixir item, the uh, mega elixir item, which would be an elixir for the whole party. Everybody is fully restored health and, and magic points for the entire party. At the end of the game, everybody would have all the ones they found throughout the game because they were rare, they were hard to find, and there was never a situation that justified you using them. They were too powerful. There were always other items that were the better choice rather than wasting your Mega Elixir at that particular point in time. The same thing ends up happening with a lot of these spells where... They can be a great thing, but nobody ever uses them because they can never justify the experience points. Or they're not going to help out the rest of the party because crafting those magic items that would be very useful end up costing you experience points and dragging you back down. And now your wizard ends up being two, three levels lower than your... Or even if you're not regressing in levels, 
they're leveling slower than everybody else because they're eating up their experience points. I just think it's not the, the wisest use. There's other things that can be done there. But aside, and of course, milestone leveling kind of eliminates the problem for that. You just have to come up with other solutions. Well, that's what I got to say on this. Really, this was just kind of an off-the-cuff thing, thinking about ways to use experience points at your table to help manipulate the game in order to kind of steer things in the right way. I really like the idea of we give group experience based on overall success and players' poor behavior or bad role-playing and that sort of thing ends up dragging the experience down because it negatively affects the whole group whereas individual actions can result in some rewards and thus balance things out for that player who's doing really good while the other guy's doing really bad. But you let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Talk to you guys next time. Like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment so I can see what you have to think about how wrong I am on experience.